Hello friends, in this video I want to talk about the Harman 2025 target curve for the BNK5128. Well, I guess it's not even the Harman target anymore since Sean Olive left Harman International and is now the Sean Olive BNK5128 target curve with some method of adjustment procedure applied, whatever. So the paper is titled Determining the Preferred In-Ear Headphone Target Response Using a Method of Adjustment and it is using the BNK5128 diffuse field at a related transfer function measured by Oratory 1990 as a baseline, and it's letting users adjust the gain of three different filters, a low shell filter centered at a very high frequency, then an ear gain peaking filter and a high shell filter. Frequency is 164 hertz, that's pretty high, but the Q factor is extremely low. Um, the treble shelf, again, 4.3 kilohertz, really low Q factor, uh, mid-range, three kilohertz, whatever. I mean. You know, you can do all these method of adjustment studies, but if you're not even setting the filters at the correct locations, you're not going to get that good of a target curve out of it. And and I mean, that was one of the pitfalls of the original PEC-DB experiment, which was addressed in the newest listing test, which derived the PEC-DB Hi-Fi target. But um, let's just continue here. So, okay, we have the target curve in thick dash gray, which is the average of the 36 listener preference. If we go to Kernicle's tool, we can see he has the target curve on his 5128 IEM rig. And if you go to squig.link, he has the Harman method of adjustment 2025 target curve. And if you want to find out how this target curve was derived, it's given with some information saying that, oh, the 5128 is a two-pronged effort that aims to make measurements between squig sites more comparable, yada, yada. Um, we're using Krinical's measurements on the 5128 and 711, comparing them and making a target curve that has Kernicle's IEF comp built in for that rig or the inverse of it so that you don't necessarily need to use the IEF comp and it should give accurate measurements relative to the 5128. Um, you know, how accurate this is is really questionable, but since we're using SuperReview's graphs as the highest priority in our measurement database, we might as well use his um, Harman 2025 Delta target. It's not even officially branded by Harman, so I'm not really sure why they're calling it that, but that's what we are calling it in the shootout because it is a popular squig target right now. And if you go to pecdb.com slash shootout for in-ears and over-ears, you can test the PECDB Hi-Fi target, the Harman in-ear 2019, Harman over-ear 2018, and Harman method of adjustment 2025 target curves. So yeah, go take the test, find out what you like. This is just a quick video trying to get people to take this test to see if the Harman method of adjustment 2025 delta target is any good. Um, we're testing the same target curve for both in-ears and over-ears, even though I guess the method of adjustment 2025 target curve being compensated, whatever, doesn't really make that much sense in theory. But um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, just a lot of rambling here, but um, we're, we're testing the same target curves between the in-ear and over-ear listening tests so we're able to see if there's actually any difference in preferred target curves on the 711 standard, which our original paper did somewhat address, but we tested different target curves in um, that listening test for both in-ears and over-ears. And in our follow-up studies, we've always done the same target curves for both in-ears and over-ears. Well, I wouldn't even say study more like experiment, but um, yeah, so now just go take the test, find out which target curve you like more, post your results in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time.